All right. So awesome. Like, uh, you will be giving a couple of concerts here in Mexico. Absolutely the first time. The first one will be on um, Guadalajara, September 23rd. The second one in Mexico City, September 24th. Uh, Lazaro Cristobal Comala will be opening for you. Uh, okay. So this will be your first time here. Uh, but being from the south of the USA, I will imagine that you have had some kind of contact with Mexican culture, music. I know mm -hmm. that you toured with Calexico to use mariachi elements, for example, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. playlists that you made. Uh, you added the Mexican trio Los Panchos. So what do you expect? Sí. From this? Oh. Okay, Los Panchos. Um, I mean that's a that's a that's an interesting thing because I mean yeah being from the south of of the United States of course I'm I'm close to the culture and stuff but I mean but we can go even to darker stranger places than that because dude I fucking you know just a just in the in the length of history not that long ago I mean I would have been fucking raised in Mexico you know it wasn't until the uh, it wasn't until the fucking I guess for lack of better terms, the fucking gringos decided that they uh they wanted more place to fucking spread their slavery. They decided, oh, we'll just we'll just fucking take this land. And so it's a it's a very, you know, if we live in in modern terms, yes, it's the United States and yes, it's Texas and yes, it's these things, yes, it's Mexico. Um, but if you look at it through like the lenses of fucking reality, um, the names and the places of all that, it changes drastically you know and it's it's very it's very interesting to have because of course when i was young we we learned about the fucking alamo and we learned about the republic of texas and we learned about all these things and we were like filled with fucking pride you know and all this stuff that uh that it was our land and it's like no dude you get fucking old and you realize no no it's just it's just fucking white people doing what white people do and they steal shit from people and they make it their own and uh and so it's very fucking fascinating, man. Um, but yeah, I'm finally getting to, you probably didn't want to talk about fucking the history of, of politics and racism with me. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking really, I'm really excited to come, but, it, but I think even more than my excitement, it's very strange that it's taking me 20 years of this career and 42 years of age to finally go down and play some shows. Um, it's very, it's a very strange thing, um, but I'm glad to finally be, I'm glad to finally be doing it, you know, finally. Yeah, we're happy to have you. And yes, as you mentioned, awesome. there's a scene here in Mexico that, uh, especially people who are over there in the United States, uh, they say, we even crossed the, the, the border, the border crossed us, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, man. Yeah, yeah, the history of that's fuck. it's wild, and but also like, I'm, I mean, I might not look it, but I'm a, I'm what what they call Native American. I'm a, my people are called Chickasaws, and we're from we were like from what they ended up calling like Mississippi, Alabama, like all the way up to what they call like Philadelphia and stuff. And so my yeah my my history and my my view on on where I came from and uh, and where I came from and what it turned into and all those things. It's uh, I I feel pretty acutely acutely aware of the. Uh, you know the 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 misfortunes of of history and stuff. Um, yeah, indeed. Yeah, and it, it's good because someone someone like you taking the message from Woody Guthrie, for example, putting on your guitar that that machine killed fascist, in your case fascism, mm -hmm. and still going on. So it, it's good for, to have people who are battling that. Yeah, and, and yeah, yeah. F fascism is. I think when I first started putting on that you know, this machine kills fascist. And I started like, then I started, yeah, I guess like touting that, that phrase or something. I, I, I did not, I did not understand. I don't believe what that meant. You know, I think when I thought about that and I, I thought about fascism, you know, like the idea of, you know, Italy comes to mind or the idea of, of, of course, Germany, the idea of these, of these certain places, you know, in the old world or whatever they want to call it. Um, that was my, that was the the view that I felt I, I looked in. Um, but no, no, it's uh yeah, fascism is a it's a very real and it's a very alive monster. Um and I mean I mean I mean fucking A, like today I was just the uh the uh my god, the the governor of my state of Texas, uh who cares what his fucking name is, but he's the governor. He just, you might've seen this, maybe you didn't. Um, but he, you know, like if you're an Olympic swimming pool, you put the the floaty things, you know, between the lanes. 
Well, this motherfucker, he takes some of those, he fucking wraps them up in barbed wire and he fucking puts them in the middle of the real fucking Grand River, man. Um, and so not not only do I believe that fascism is, is, of course, alive and it's well and it's apparently doing very fucking good, but it's not just like some archaic idea of, you know, it's something that's being acted on on, on, a, on a daily fucking on a daily level. And um, and of course, I think being from being from Texas, I think my view of that would be different than if I was from Ohio or if I was from like the northern border or something. Um, but yeah, fascism is very fucking alive and it's a very fucking and it's a very it's a very frightening thing. And it's one of the I'm in Madrid right now. I live half in Madrid and half in Texas. And I think that can't call it the rise of modern day fascism, but the presence of modern day fascism uh, in the United States and in Texas, um, it's it's become something that, you know, it's it's unignorable. You can't you can't get away from it. And the way that the people think and the way that the people live, like where I'm from and close to the border of northern Texas, close to I live right south of the of Indian territory. Um, it becomes a thing uh, the whole Christian capitalist walmart uh culture it, it it's it's turned into a thing that it's 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 almost it's i find it almost impossible to to live around um and to and to be involved with on a, a daily basis um i do have some kids there in texas for better or for worse i do have some kids there and so of course i go back and i i see them as much as i'm legally able to which is a totally other story um but uh but yeah, it just came to a point that yeah, I just had to get the fuck. I just I felt the need to just get the hell out of there. It became it became too much. Um, but yeah, so so that's those are some things I think about, you know. <laughs> I agree. I agree. And sadly, <laughs> it is alive. Let's move to better things to, to talk about. If we, <laughs> if you want to if you want to try, man, we can fucking try. I'm not <laughs> sure how successful we'll be, but let's do it, man. <laughs> For example. I know that you prepared this tour with uh, Aso Stefana, who also produced I Lie to You, your new album. And how did you get together and is he coming for the Mexico shows? Um, he, regretfully, he's not coming for, for the Mexican shows. Um, we tried to add some more shows on. We were talking to like some people in Bogota. We were talking to some people in, in um, Argentina and in Chile. Um, but that it didn't it didn't come together and the reason why we need to do that is of course he's a fucking italian and so it takes a little bit of money to get him oh, oh no what the fuck man man welcome back no worries hey, recording now i can hear you man technology dude robots and technology i'm only really good at like putting play on music and like watching some YouTube shit. But when it comes to navigating the modern world, man, I, I, I'm supposed to be a millennial, but I don't think I paid enough fucking attention when I was growing up, man. Um, but yeah, so Asso, so I wanted him to come over. Of course I wanted, I thought it'd be really rad to be, to spend some, some time with him. And of course I'm okay with, with traveling to new countries and new lands and, and meeting new people and being, okay with that um i'm not like daniel johnston or some shit uh, but uh oh wait he's dead i shouldn't talk shit about him but um yeah we just couldn't get the the finances together um and i guess how i met him is he plays with a very famous italian man named uh vinicio capicella um who i think wants to be like the italian tom waits or something like that um and Vinicio puts on a big festival down in the south of Italy and so invited me to come and play and then he wanted me to play on stage one of his songs that night and so that's when I met Asso um, and then it was really from there he just he's an amazing character because really from there he worked himself from that moment even into starting on I Lie to You and then we had the with the pandemic and all these things he spent a lot of his life trying to make things happen for me, trying to find me a label and trying to to make things work. Because uh, when a bit after he met, right when we were starting, I lied to you. Um, I had left my label, my English label. Um, uh, I 
was ghosting my booking agent because he was a fucking asshole. And so I was working at like a video store and I was working at a pizza place and my life was really, I was going to really start like trying to get a, like apply for jobs at the casino, like a good Indian and shit like that, you know? Um, so I could just, my life was, was taking weird changes. Um, and yeah, I met him and he clearly believed in what I did and, and we just, and we started. So it's amazing to be here in, in Europe. And I just came back from, from Italy and recording with him on what will be the next record and to be touring the record that just came out. Just, yeah, he's an amazing, he's an amazing character and his history with Vinicio, with Miss PJ Harvey, with, uh, Mike Patton, uh, the people he plays with. It's like, man, I'm in some pretty big fucking company, you know, um, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a beautiful man. And he's been very invaluable to my, to my existence. Um, and I owe him a great deal. Very cool. And apparently we, we also owe him because he, he got you to you make this amazing record. Uh, talking about yeah, that man. one. Oh yeah. No, 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 no. You ask, you ask. Talking about this one, the, the, the I lied to you. It seems to me, I don't know if that's true, like a relatively brighter turn from your previous one. When I shoot you with ours, I would shoot you even even the art of the of the album is brighter and the yes light. yes even most of your previous works are tend to be black etc so i understand that this was created during the locked one but some of the songs were written before or are covers so do you see this as a brighter album or does it respond to where you are right now and what was the process of, of selecting songs for this one wow um yeah man dude the, the last musicians the musicians of the apocalypse or, or when I shoot at you with arrows, I shoot to destroy you. I, that, that title is really long. And I think it shows just how, how, how lost I felt I was in the idea of songwriting or the idea of being a, a songwriter. Um, I was listening to that record the other day and it, it, it feels like, a I don't know. It feels like a, a breakup record with, with the, the human that, the society I was raised in, the human that they were trying to make, the things that they told me were important and the things that I, I, I was led to believe were important, which is, yeah, stuff like family and, and God and, and money and country and all these things. Um, it, yeah, it just feels like, uh, yeah, just like a breakup record from, from all those concepts because I realized that it was, that all of those things are, or one, maybe false, two, or bullshit, or three, are just absolute lies and propaganda that um that that I was taught in the United States is like what it was to be a good person or what it was to be a fucking a good American or whatever the fuck that was. Um and so that's yeah, that's the that's the fucking that's the place where I was um with that record. Um and then when Asso invited me to start working on the new one the idea was to get because all my records going i mean every one of my albums none of them has been like a brand new record like a, a brand new songs um some of them are new of course but then some of them are songs i would have written when i was anywhere from my teenagers you know, in, into my 20s and stuff like that it's off of i lie to you i wanted to gather the last of those um which would have been like uh, like find your way out it would have been like you and me, which I guess didn't end up on the physical record. Um, a, a handful of those songs were were songs from my childhood and songs from my earlier life that I wanted to be done with um, because I'd realized um, that all I was doing was writing records, looking into the past looking at relationships in the past, looking at feelings of the past. And, and it kind of, it hit me that it, that it, no wonder I was fucking depressed and no wonder I was writing shit music that I didn't, that didn't speak to me and I didn't appreciate because I was speaking about things and, and giving my time and effort into things that didn't, that didn't exist. Um, they were people that were long gone. They were situations that were long gone. Um, and so when we were doing I Lie to You, I felt that it was that it was time to change. Of course, it was time to change how I wrote songs or maybe not how I wrote songs. It wasn't as complicated as that. It was more of like, what am I going to look at and focus on when I am writing the songs? Um, so yeah, I Lie to You was 
I felt it was like closing up that old way of doing things. Um, and with that, I guess you had like the cover by David Bazan, which was, you know, People, which was a song, uh, a guy that had kept me company through all those years as being a younger a younger kid in Texas under the under the the strong heavy hand of of God and country um and that's and that's when like ignore the days came and that's when um wasted days and wasted nights came that's when some new songs uh the days of my youth apparently I'm obsessed with talking about the fucking time of day apparently um but uh yeah those songs came and and it, it's it's pretty fucking fascinating because let's say like ignore the days um when i wrote those words and i wrote that song it felt very similar to older songs i didn't know what i was talking about i didn't know what i was trying to to get to but then years later when the video was put together that had nothing to do with the song at all the video was done before the song was even written um all these things started coming together and it and it 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 was weird that I had somehow been able to get down in music, like a, a, a portrait of the life that I was living uh, and the life that I felt I needed to, that I needed to uh, escape and I needed to like shed that, that fucking, that skin. And so, uh, so yeah, I lie to you. It's like a mixture of, yeah, like closing, closing the, the, the curtains on a different way I was living and, and also like opening up another curtain to see where the fuck I was going going to go um and that's what's led me into the songs i'm working on now and the yeah man it, it's been it's been a very strange kind of metaphysical i sound like a fucking hippie but it's it's a very strange journey that i've that i've that i've been on because when i toured in europe for for this record like back in march i sold out almost every show um which the previous record i was not selling out i wasn't even close to selling out shows um and so it's beautiful to be able to feel that what I wanted to accomplish somehow was accomplished. Um, and I feel like in my life, wanting to accomplish things, that that mix of wanting to do something and actually doing something, I feel it's very, very difficult. And usually it's a, usually it's like a, a pretty pointless game to try to play with yourself, you know? Yeah. In this case, paid out, man. Awesome. I'm glad, man. Yeah, but, it, it, but it's not also not right, right? You, you have you have these things like walking on eggshells that basically is bleak, dark, murder ballad, right? But yeah. it is a that, murder ballad, no shit. <laughs> got, you, got you music. So what, what do you get? And you you see that this is a resource that gets you somewhere now, sort of or over. Would you, would you use these kind of things? Wait, um, uh, what what kind of things you mean? You mean like the the different types of? Maybe ask that just one more time, man. Yeah, uh, sorry, I, I meant that I, I no. feel that in the new album you have this uh, mixture between dark lyrics, but more of a catchy music just to get you there. Even the cover of mm. uh, Denver, that kind of things. Uh, I, I feel yeah. that it's a pretty cool resource. I don't know why did you uh, do that? Do it that way? Yeah, I've always been. Uh... I've always been fascinated with with that with that strange way that fuck man wow this I could have a big answer with this um so going to church when I was a kid um you, you know you, you like people were mixing music with with worshiping god you know and I remember like there's like this man like praying or whatever and then all of a sudden like this real like calm fucking piano kind of comes in and then he starts getting more excited and the music fucking builds and it's like wow you really realize just how and that's for ill but you realize just how manipulative music can be um and how manipulative you can you can again for good or for bad that you can use that and so i've always been fascinated in like you're saying like the murder ballad that is walking on eggshells the fact that it has that that bouncy thing and I should be singing about like, I don't know, fucking riding horses and drinking beer or something. But here I am talking about, you know, murdering somebody and maybe murdering myself. Um, yeah, I guess I never thought that sad songs should sound so should sound sad. I think that maybe sad songs should sound really fucking happy or really miserable so or, or really happy songs should sound really, really fucking sad. 
though I still haven't written a very happy song. Um, but no, it's just that, yeah, it's just the, the, the manipulation of music and, and the way that music can, can manipulate people's feelings. And of course, manipulation is usually used as a very negative connotation and a very, a dark subject. Um, but I don't feel I'm, I'm not speaking about it in that, in that manner. I think there's a good side, there's a good side of, of manipulation. Um, and when it's used in, when it's used in art or it's used in music, um, I think it can be used to, to, to benefit society and benefit people because we're able to, to sit and, and sift through what, what are those things that like make us happy and what are those things that make us sad or nostalgic and, and what can you put together with words and, and melodies to, uh, to become, I guess, more fucking self-aware of, of why you feel things and, and how you feel things, you know? Yeah, it is a powerful thing, right, music? Yes, absolutely. And it can be, it can be used for, yeah, for very bad things. I mean, I think there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of examples in, fuck, man, a lot of modern, a lot of modern pop music that comes from, that comes from the land that I came from. Um, it sounds so, it sounds in certain ways, but, uh, but yeah, it's really when you, when you look deeper into it, like the void and the, yeah, I guess maybe people playing music in, in certain churches in the Baptist church, I guess it's very similar to, uh, to what Justin Bieber or what, uh, you know, what people are trying to do. I can't believe I said Justin Bieber. How fucking old am I, man? Um, but what, uh, but I guess it's still relevant to some degree, so it makes sense. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, music is a very strange thing, man. I didn't, I didn't realize when I was younger. Um, I didn't realize just how powerful it was. Um, and you know, you take a fucking boy, you take a boy, and he's a teenager, and he can write some songs, and he has a little tape recorder, and he likes a girl, and it's like, oh. The formula is there. You write a song, you record it on the fucking tape, you play it to the girl, you fucking have the lady. And when you're young, you're thinking, "Oh, I'm I'm using my talent. <laughs> I'm using my talents to do this stuff." But in the end, you're no better than the other people. That it's like, no, no, no. You you're using your your, your talents to uh, to manipulate the uh, the the flexible and and dangerous mind that that is the is the modern fucking human. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's true. So Indeed, to, finish, man. to finish with this part of the going back in time, uh, but almost 20 years ago, you, you released the day that uh, the day Texas sank to the bottom of the sea, your first single. It was great of decision for the first single, but it was, I think it was a statement and it was a very good statement. Uh, mm -hmm. So my, my question is, you are, as I understand, uh, putting out the last batch of songs for this period of time so what can you tell us about that song going back in time and what is next in, in, in what will be what, what will the next chapter look like wow mm. let me get another pack of cigarettes real fast i'll be right back <laughs> <clears throat> wow the day texas sank holy fuck man it's really interesting that the last thing i was talking about was the idea of music manipulating people um because when I think back to that song, that I mean, I'm pretty sure that's that's kind of exactly where it, it came from. Um, I mean, I remember the woman that I wrote it for, and that woman is not in my life anymore, and that woman has not been in my life for a long time. And uh, and I think, of, I mean, holy fuck, man! I think about those words, and I think it's like uh, it was almost like the dark side of Disneyland or something. You're you're dealing with I think that song deals with, it's just too over the fucking top. It's really dramatic. The idea of, when I think about that song, it's like some, like you see like a, a man standing there and he's about to fucking hang himself with a noose and, and all these things he's about to do is like related to this woman that, that he loves and not only related to, to the love, but it's like the love that maybe she's giving back to him. And so even within the song, it's very, if we made a movie about it, you know, it could be, it could be seen as, a high a high form of, of manipulation um but i but i think a lot of that stuff is attached to 
I think a lot of music that I grew up on, like let's say The Cure, for example, when when you're listening to The Cure as a boy and you're listening like to Friday, I'm in love and you're listening to Love Cats and these types of things, you really get involved with, with the relationship of it and the idea of love and the idea of how relationships work and all these things. And, and um, in my older age, I think I've, I've realized that those, that that kind of over the top love affair, that over the, the top um, view of what love is or what love should be. And um, I don't know how beneficial that, 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 that was, I think in some ways it's very similar to like showing you know, little girls like fucking Snow White and stuff. It's that, oh, you're going to grow up and you're going to find a man and he's going to fucking save you and these things. On the other side, it's like, a, it's a different version of that. Like, oh, I am this person. I will provide you this and and we will have this together. Um, this might not be the answer you're asking for, but no, I find it, I find it really, I, I feel like I can learn a lot about myself, of course, by by going back and looking at that, at those songs and, and the way I guess I saw myself or the way I guess I, more importantly, the way I viewed the world. Um, but I clearly had something to say, man. Fuck me. I mean, yeah, the gospel of progress was very, I didn't feel it like that at the time. But but looking back at, at what was happening, like this whole new folk mu movement at the time, you had like, you know, bands like Vetiver and you know, Sufjan Stevens and you had like iron and wine and you had all these things and and to, to listen back to what those humans were doing um and then to see that gospel of progress record and to see how that fit in I I not to blow my own horn but I really felt like in the end looking back that I was doing something very different than the rest of that new folk movement was 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 going um so yeah, it played a it played an an important role, you know, and it's a strange thing because I feel like that's still people's favorite record of mine. It's still something I feel like people are still maybe just in Europe, but I feel like they're they're still trying they still want to see me get back to what that was um or to who I was then. It's very it's very odd. Um like there was a magazine called Uncut, uh, an English magazine. And I think I got like, it was one of the best records of the year in Uncut. Um, and people were touting it as some glorious fucking victory on modern music and all these things. And when I released I Lie to You, the record was coming out. I was living here in Spain and I go to the fucking store and I, I find the Uncut and, and there's like a three sentence review that basically is like, oh, it seems like Micah just got some old songs together and just released it to us. Just like really just bypassing any connection or importance with what was happening with I Lie to You because I felt that I Lie to You was was starting was starting new and it was doing something new and it was coming from a a place as a songwriter that uh yeah I you know I had a cosmic shift in my life and that 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 record represented that and so it was really fucking strange to I mean it was really strange to uh, to see that a group of people or, a, or a, a little sliver of society, people that used to hold me up and used to say really awesome things about my about my music and used to like tout me as some sort of creative fucking champion or something, um, that here it was 20 years later and they were just writing me off as if I shouldn't, it, like it'd be better off if I didn't exist anymore. Um, and so that's, so that was, that was really interesting. Um, wow. All the things I think about from that, from that, from that question, man, I'll try to get to the end of this soon. Um, we have that taught me a lot of awesome. Awesome. Yeah. That, so, but with that, with that uncut thing, that taught me a lot of stuff. I felt I was able to face some things Um like the way that the music industry was 20 years ago and the way and my connection to the press and my connection to, to humans that were listening to my stuff. Um, I felt it was, it was really telling for, for, let's say for this example, for uncut to really write a, I thought it was even pointless to print, but to write that because it really showed me that whatever my relationship to the music industry, 
whatever my relationship is, is depressed, whatever I thought these things were, these things that I thought were important, um, they they are they are a different beast in the in the modern world. Um, and so even though it it fucking bothered me greatly that day to to read something like that, I think it I felt like it could be used as a metaphor to really change my my view on yeah what I thought was important and and the way that that those things would affect me personally. Um, and I guess that's the thing after, after having a career of 20 fucking years, Jesus Christ, um, it's really fascinating to be able to think about those things and, and to, to be around for long enough doing what I do to, dude, they're fucking jamming down in the street, man. <laughs> um, and, uh, and so, yeah, but I guess that's the thing in the end, you know, my, my music is, you can probably tell from this interview, um, that my music is a part of my life, of course. Um, and my life is a part of my music. Um, but it's, it's something that is so inter intertwined that I don't think I can speak about my music without speaking about a lot of my life and, and vice versa. Um, there's a lot of times in interviews that I might, that I feel like, oh, maybe you shouldn't share so many personal things. Maybe you should speak differently. Um, maybe keep some things hidden, you know, behind the veil or something. Um, but in the end, I think that's almost fucking, it's almost a, 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 impossible. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but those are my thoughts about what you said. Uh, and that, that makes sense. Uh, I mean, uh, that, that, that three lines that you mentioned, it's, so it, it's, it's kind of the, the sign of the times that we are now, right? Uh, it's, it's simplistic and it's very fast. For example, we here or, or fan scene, we actively try to be slow media. We're not trying to get that headline first. We try to absorb things and then put it out there and give our opinion if someone wants to hear it. But basically more than our opinion, just to let other people know about things that are happening, right? But yeah. the, the thing is everyone is going fast, fast, fast to be the first. And that that what you just said, that sounds to me like like that, right? So yeah, yeah, it, it indeed. Makes yeah. No, we, we're, we're, we're living in this time that we don't give. I mean, Jesus Christ, I, I hear stories about how record, you know, things were done in the 70s. Like, let's say, you know, a band gets signed in the 70s. They release their, they record, they release their first record. And maybe it's not a fucking hit, but okay. They're going to work on their second. They're going to work on their third. They're going to work on their fourth. And then maybe somewhere down the line that will hit. But now, yeah, we're so, we're so fucking bored with whatever's happening in the world that we don't, that, I mean, it's our fault. Um, we don't let things, we don't let them sit in the earth and we don't let them grow and we don't see what's happening. It's like if, if a person doesn't entertain us and blow us away right fucking now, then fuck them. And if they do blow us away now, well, then we're going to like them for right now, but fuck them in five minutes. Um, and I don't know in the end, I don't know what kind of fucking art we are allowing to be created and if we don't know what art we're allowed to being to, to be created then and that's the art that we're consuming and so it ends up being the circ the secular thing that the things that we help happen are the things that we're going to end up consuming and here we are 10 here we are 20 years later um just spinning out into the universe like lord knows what the fuck we are we're learning as a society from from the things that that we that we create um so yet a but you know we're we're human beings and so we're very good at creating the things that will destroy us you know <laughs> and that mixing <laughs> things. one thing is art and one thing is entertainment we usually get things mixed up right but... yes absolutely man absolutely but uh you know we're all gonna die someday soon and so who fucking cares you know <laughs> <laughs> Let's let's change something a little bit. Uh, this this might be a, uh, an odd question, maybe, but uh, what one thing that is distinctive about your music is your voice. Uh, Morrissey once said that when he first properly sang, he was not expecting what came out of his mouth. He was amazed by that sound. So I was being curious of uh, does something like that happen to you, or was something natural? Wow. Um... my relationship with my voice is always well since I started doing this I guess professionally or whatever it's been an interesting thing because 
when the reviews started coming out for the gospel, people talked about, yeah, how low my voice was and how deep and all these, all these things. And, and I listen back to it now and it doesn't, it doesn't sound that low. It doesn't in my head, it doesn't sound like the way that people, the way that people described it. Um, and it's, and it was through releasing that record and all these years of touring. And I used to scream a lot more. I used to be a lot more angry and every tour I'd lose my voice. And I think over time I've really, I fucking scarred it. Um, and I've really damaged my voice. Um, but I feel like now it's turned into what people used to talk about. Um, I feel at some point in the future, I'll, I'll, I'll just sound like a fucking elephant. When I'm around you, you'll just see a mouth moving and your ears will pop because it'll be so fucking low. Um, but, uh, but I never thought, yeah, I, I never, I feel like my voice used to be really fucking high when I was younger. If I go back and listen to stuff when I was a teenager, um, like really early teens, like 12, 13 and stuff. Um, but yeah, I guess I've had like a little bit of like, uh, like, like body dysmorphia with my, with my voice, because I've always been told it sounds certain ways or it touches people in certain ways. And my perception of, of what that is, it, it, it's never quite, it's never quite aligned. Um, and I still feel like I'm trying to learn how to sing and I'm still trying to feel like I'm trying to figure out how I fucking sing. Um, which is a strange thing to say, I guess, again, 20 years into this thing. Um, but whatever, but no matter what my fucking opinion, it doesn't matter. Um, the way that people hear my voice and the way that they, I guess, hear the words or they don't understand the words that I'm saying, however it goes for each individual person that clearly speaks to them. Um, and it, uh, and it's kept me around doing it for this long. And so, um, yeah, again, no matter what my opinion on what I, what I do, I, it's, I believe it's done some pretty important things for people more than me. I feel like it's done important things for people. And, and that's, uh, that's a that's a fucking dream that's um that's something that i always wanted to do writing songs is is make people feel um and to know that i to know that i do that is pretty is pretty fucking bizarre um but maybe five more years down the road maybe i'll sound like morrissey you know what i'm saying maybe if i keep going i'll i'll really get that that beautiful voice and people will start like attacking me on stage and giving me their <laughs> underwear and shit you know <laughs> Our population here in Mexico. <laughs> decline, decline. There we go. Sorry, man. I keep getting fucking scam calls from people in the Middle East trying to take my money. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> Jesus. Um, but yeah, I guess those are some those are some thoughts about about this voice I have. Yes, sir. All right. Now another thing that has distinguished you is good taste. I see it in the, in the music, in the delivery, in the art, in all things. I think that you plan things well and mm. at least that's my opinion <laughs> well no I, I appreciate it i've never been accused of having good taste you know okay. <laughs> so there's a first <laughs> <laughs> so and the songs that you select to cover is one aspect of, of that in two in 2009 you released all dressed up and smelling of strangers and you take on 16 classic songs uh, if you were to do a volume two with songs from the past 15 years uh, what would you choose or how, how did you see the current music landscape? Wow. I actually, that was a, first off, that All Dressed Up and Smelling record, man, the fucking balls, the balls that I had. Dude, that second record is like fucking Frank Sinatra and Roy Orbison and Patsy Cline. And it's like, what the, the fucking Beatles, Kakatso. I mean, the, like the balls that I had. But I thought it was really successful. I really liked doing it. I thought it was really rad. Um, and I have actually recorded a volume two. Um, and the songs I did for that, I did like uh, mm, 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 like No Surprises by Radiohead, Time in a Bottle by Jim Croce. Um, I did, there's a band, a Canadian band called Destroyer. And I was doing a, a cover or a folk I call it folk, I suppose, a folk version of their, one of their songs. And I realized it was exactly like a stroke song, like the same fucking chords, the same key, everything. And so then I, I mixed that. Um, what else? I did like fucking idols. 
um, a song of theirs called Colossus off of Joy is an Act of whatever that's called. Um, what other ones was I doing? Of course, I had to do like the obligatory Bob Dylan, but like fuck Bob Dylan, but you just have to do it sometimes. Um, so I did do another one. Yeah, man. Um, I don't think it'll ever see. Maybe it'll see the light of day sometime. Um But what was your question in the end? What was, what was your question again? Last one is, is how, how do you see the current landscape? I mean, oh. right ahead is more, more, more his times, but in, in terms, in general terms, you're going way back. So is yeah. there something like in the past 15, 15 years that you say that this is great? <laughs> what idols you, you mentioned? Yes, idols is, they've been very fucking, they're a very fucking powerful band. I'm trying to look at my look at my fucking title to see what to see what I've been into um wow man what the fuck has happened in the past 15 years I guess that's an issue with me it's like the last record that I found that is one of my favorite records right now was an album by ELO called Time um released in 1981 the year I was born. Um, and that record is a fucking work of genius. It's like, I don't like, why the fuck are we listening to the Beatles? Why are we listening to the Bee Gees? Why are we listening to Led Zeppelin? Like, fuck you. Why are we listening to anything from England? Like we have, we have time by ELO, like fuck Pink Floyd, you know? Um, and so I have this, I have this strange thing to where I find it really difficult to fucking, to find modern modern music um when i find certain things in modern music i feel like i feel like it's something that like i'm too old to listen to um i mean my 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 girlfriend is uh she's from colombia and she and she was listening to a fuckload of bad bunny and i was listening to it as well you have the record like with the heart and there's some songs there's some actual songs on on that record that are like holy fuck like these are really goddamn good songs. Um, but then next thing you know, I find out he's like dating one of the fucking Kardashians and he has like a big fucking diamond Spotify ring. So it's like, nah, I'm not gonna listen to you much more. Um, oh fuck, man. Actually, he released a song not too long ago with a band called Grupo Fra Frontera, Grupo Futura, uh, fuck. Grupo Frontera, I think. Yes, that fucking uh where is it where is it yes it's called unx 100 to that was that's something that i've heard pretty recently that i thought was fucking incredible um but i'm not answering your question modern stuff man i right. i doesn't have to be no, but I wish I could. I wish I, I wish I fucking could could think of some things. Um, I'm just not in that in that fucking place, man. I've really been been like going back into the past and like listening to like fuck, like trying to like Los Panchos and try and listening to uh like Trio Morales. Um and I mean even bands like Rapsodia, you know Rapsodia, they're like uh they they were like the first band to mix like uh I guess like fucking tropical music, whatever you want to call it, with um with techno, um some right like even even getting into some of like Rosalia stuff, um but but really going into into places like uh like the fabulous Cadillacs, Los Fabulosos, dude, Los Fabulosos Cadillacs, from Argentina. God damn man, fucking a dude, and so. That's the thing. When, when like growing up in the United States, like in in the '90s, you know, we we were, and maybe it's not just the '90s thing, but we're just going to use that because that's where I was. That's when I was raised. We were told, we were, you know, by the MTVs and by the music magazines and 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 by the stuff, we were told that that we made the best fucking music, that we did the most influential things, that we were like at the top of our fucking game. And and man, I look back, I look back now and. I get influence and, and my girlfriend, you know, she shows me things and, and it's like, wow, no, no, no. We, we, we were, we had no, 
I felt like I was, I'm not, I guess it was intentional. I'm not sure, but I felt like I was kept very fucking ignorant of the rest of the world. You know, it's like we, it's like we had our titles like rock and roll. I remember alternative became a thing. We had blues and then the rest of it, we all just put under the fucking title world music. And it's like, what do you mean? What do you fucking mean world music? Like these people are on the mountains of fucking Argentina. These people are on the fucking, you know, in the deserts of fucking Africa. And we're all gonna, these people like in the mountains of fucking China. And we're all going to put this under the same moniker. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, that goes into a lot of, I mean, that's just, you can chalk that up to the, to the powerful and highly successful um, machine that is, you know, the propaganda machine of, of the fucking gringo, man. Um, it's a, it's a fucking wild, it's a wild place and it's a wild thing to have been, to have been raised in um, and to realize that yeah you you weren't at the top of your fucking game and no you weren't living in the greatest country in the world and no you are not standing for freedom you know what i'm saying all these yeah. all these things you know um and uh yeah it, 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 it's a difficult thing but but yeah i guess as far as the music goes yeah i'm i'm, I'm still trying to i'm still finding i'm doing my best to find the timeless in in endless lines of music that that have gone back for fucking thousands of years that has nothing to do with yeah has nothing to do with the goddamn whatever that spirit of the united states is um but it's strange to grow up and it's strange to to feel like a sense of embarrassment and a sense of shame about those things um i mean even coming and 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 even playing in Mexico for the first time after 20 fucking years, that really holds a place of shame for me. Because again, like we've talked about, like that was Mexico. Like what the fuck was I not doing going, going anywhere? Um, I just got like sucked up by, by the old world over in Europe. And, and for some reason I, I didn't, I guess nobody over there, nobody over here. I mean, um, was pushing me into different parts of the fucking world. And that seems just like such a fucked up, I can't think of a good word, but it seems like just a really fucked up place to, a place to be. And so at this time, I'm I'm very glad to finally be fucking coming down and finally start playing in places to where, you know, English isn't some fucking first colonized language. Of course, we all have our different colonized languages. You know what I'm saying? Um, we all have our different colonized languages. Um, but for me, it's like, uh, it's a, it's a social, it's, it's important to my existence to learn about all the things that I was taught to ignore as a child, you know, as fucked up as that sounds. I know that sounds fucked up, but oh, I right. have to exp express that. You on, know? The, on the contrary, that is, uh, that is a triumph that's, uh, that you, anyone gets to see that uh, and, and go there. Right. And see, that, that's life at the end of the other thing. Fuck, man, but I listen. Let's say I put in in the morning, I get up and I put on Los Panchos. I've been listening to them a lot, you know, and it's like, wow, this is like, it gives you that a feeling of like the beauty that fucking humans, that humans create. Um, and uh, yeah, and it's not, and, and it's so beautiful to, you know, to hear something that, you know, 50, 40, however many fucking years old, and it's still so, so fucking, uh, so fucking alive. And of course, this is all connected as well. I'm I'm a Chickasaw, I don't look it, but I'm a Chickasaw Native American, and I'm very fascinated with these timelines and with these this the ancestral time that goes back for tens of thousands of years. Like I I feel like I listen to Los Panchos, and it's like I'm not listening to a man from the you know from the 50s. I'm not listening to a man from the 1900s or the 20th century. I mean, I'm listening to to thousands of years of humans being humans and and that's a holy shit man um that's what that's what for me that's what music is is, is about it's not about um yeah whatever is whatever is popular now or whatever is um uh important because i feel like whatever yeah. we hold as a modern society is important for me it, it seems it's, it's it's vacuous and it seems very very empty in in a lot of ways you know yeah, yeah. So. I have three more. I don't know how are you in times. No, I'm fine, fine, man. I'm good. All right. Yes. Perfect. 
you were mentioning Los Panchos. I don't know if you have heard of Alfredo Jimenez. You haven't? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I think you will like it. He's a folk musician from long ago here in Mexico. Very influential. Very, very good. Badass, man. Like awesome. that. <laughs> so you were mentioning about that maybe it, we will never see the volume two of this album. Is there a way? Oh, no. Do you think that someday you will be releasing the full present the Holy Strangers? I know there was some issues oh. with the discography and all of that, but is that something that might happen later or? Mm. Yeah, fuck me, man. That was a that was a situation. I mean that 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 record in itself is like a is a metaphor for the way I I felt about music and the music music industry as a whole um and the things that i needed to escape from because yeah because that that record i know that people wouldn't you know the idea of like a i called it like a modern folk opera um and i know that's like really hipster and really twee and it can be considered kind of bullshit or maybe reaching um but that's but that's exactly what i did man and it was very very long and i have a i still have all the songs on a folder on my computer back in texas um and it's confounding because when that was released, of course, the internet was, of course, the thing. Spotify is a thing. The way that we're consuming music now was a thing. Um, and so for me, it confused me that my label didn't want to release it because it's like, you don't have to release the whole thing on vinyl. It doesn't have to cost you any money. Just put it online and and that's it. Um, but I guess somehow they thought it. I don't. I don't even know why they were even concerned with the idea of really making money through my music i mean because that, that, that's not going to be a popular record that's not going to be on the fucking radio that's not going to be that's not going to be a thing and so if it's not going to be a thing why do we have to put rules and regulations on it um and so yeah i i hold a special dark place in my heart and in my soul for that label and for the people that that i was working with then um but yeah, I I want I wanted to see the light of day. At this point, I am doing my goddamn best to finally get the rights because I have all the rights of all my records, but they're in the hands of other record labels, and I need I need to get those things signed over to me officially um, and properly given to me. Uh, and then I I need to start reissuing things, and I need I need to uh, to make things available, um, and that would be. A major that would be a major part of that is doing that old album um i don't think hearing the whole thing i i don't think like better stuff was left off i don't think it's going to make a completely different album but if anything it's gonna it's gonna show the whole project because in the end i just i just showed people half of half of the story i was telling um mm -hmm. and uh actually i even wrote a book that was published published is a strong word i had a book that that was that was published when uh when that album came out that all the chapters had a, a song that, that coordinated with it um but it's a highly confusing book and it even doesn't make a lot of sense to me the way i was reading it uh writing it i mean um it's a bit of a strange one but yes the label i'm on now this italian label um really good really good supportive people that would be something i'm sure that they would be interested in doing in the future you know that would be great. That would be great. And this is the only one with you on the cover, I think, right? Yeah, no shit. Yeah, that's me. That's Goddamn. Yeah. That was me in a, in a past let's life. Make it kind of, <laughs> kind of special. All right. So let's yeah. let's start wrapping this up. Uh, every every year, our fanzine celebrates an artist for an important milestone in their career. Uh, we did Bob Dylan. We did Charlie Garcia. And this year, uh, it will be the Beatles. Uh, you covered while well, my Italian three whips. Is that your favorite Beatles song? Or do you have others? One favorite album from them? Man, the Beatles. Actually, that's strange. I've been I started listening to them yesterday again. Um, the Beatles, I feel like they're the cure. They're this band that I know they have good songs, but I'll ignore it for the longest time. Then I'll come back and be like, holy fuck, this is awesome. Um the story behind my guitar gently weeps is that this magazine called Uncut out of England. No, was it Mojo? Whatever, whatever. Some fucking magazine that probably isn't, doesn't even exist anymore. Um, they were doing a Beatles covers album of... Is that off the White Album? Guitar Gently Weeps? Is that the White Album? Okay, it that's it. Album, yes. so they were, 
yeah so they were doing like a a covers record of um yeah of, of that whole of the whole record so they asked me which one i wanted to do i fucking swear to god that i said guitar gently weeps and i'm pretty sure they said yes and i started recording mm, and really went for it that that recording of that song for me it's like a very it's a very proud proud moment um and not not proud because it was the fucking Beatles, but proud because I was able to take something that was so historically important or historically like in set in stone, and I was able to do something complete something myself with it. Um, so I finished the song and I send it into the label, and they and then a few days later they wrote back and they're like, "Oh, you were supposed to do a different song," and I'm like, "What do you fucking mean? Like, oh, you were supposed to do Happiness Is a Warm Gun," and I was like, "Oh, well, fuck." And they're like, well, you need to turn it in tomorrow or you're not going to be on the record. And I'm like, there's no fucking, if Guitar Gently Weep took me a fucking month to record, there's no way with the complexity of what Happiness is a Warm Gun is, there's no way I can do it. And so I wasn't on the record. And that's when, you know, a little while later, I decided to put it on the the All Dressed Up album. <clears throat> um So that's the story behind that. It was a, it was a mistake. That's really, that's really what happened. But the songs that I've been listening to on the Beatles lately, man, like I really like, uh, 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 come on, Henson. Uh, Two of Us is fucking amazing from Let It Be, man. Yeah. Um, uh, Mr. Moonlight, man, uh, from Beatles for Sale. Um, this Boy is fucking incredible. Um, uh wow man they have some fucking i always tended to go towards <clears throat> towards john's stuff but i think in the end i guess my favorite beetle would have been fucking george harrison because when he released all things must pass which is i guess like a lot of the songs or the majority of the songs he was doing during his tenure in the beatles it's <clears throat> i feel like it makes paul mccartney seem like a like he should be singing in Las Vegas or something, you know, like he's like a fucking entertainer. <laughs> um, whereas I didn't feel like John or I didn't feel like Mr. Harrison, they didn't seem like entertainers. They were singing from a very, from a very different place. Um, but yeah, the Beatles are fucking rad, man. I, I, I didn't grow up listening to them. Um, in my drug fueled late teenage life, um, on a bunch of LSD, I started getting into, you know, Sergeant Peppers and, and some of that more psychedelic stuff. Um, but it's the same, like even you said Bob Dylan, I didn't, I wasn't into Bob Dylan when I was young. Um, I got into Bob Dylan like in my twenties and then I kind of left him in my twenties. And so <clears throat> some of these historical bands um, didn't play a, a, a great role in, in raising me or, or, or influencing my music and stuff like that. So it's very interesting. Right, yeah, it's been 16 years since the Beatles, since the first album. Now, man, <laughs> it's a fucking long time, man. It's and, a fucking and, long time, yeah. And all the, all the, all the people that we fucking lost, and here you have fucking Paul McCartney just still alive. I think he must be some sort of fucking robot, you know, like hooked up to machines, <laughs> and he's just, he's still fucking going, singing Eleanor Rigby to us and shit, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, Micah, uh, the last one. Any message from your Mexican fans uh, before the geeks? Shit, man. Um, Putting you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, any, any, any fucking message. Shit, I, I don't know if I have a message. I just really hope that. <clears throat> I hope that I can go down there, and I hope uh, that people have been waiting around for twenty years. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, I can I can show them something that's uh, that's worthwhile to them. Um, Shit, man. I think it's a big responsibility. I find it's been a very long time since I've gone to to new and fascinating lands. Um, and so to to be able to go to a new one at the age of 40, at the age of 42 and and to be and to be where I am in my life right now. Um, and the person that I've evolved into or whatever. Um, I feel that yeah, it's the I'm really glad to come, and I feel it's it's the best time that I finally. I think I've, I'm I'm the best at this point. I'm the be best version of myself, and uh, and I hope that comes across. You know.
I'm sure it will be great. We're looking forward to it. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much again for your time, uh, for the music, and looking forward for the concerts and the, the new stuff that you awesome. have uh, coming out. Thank you so much, Rodrigo, man. I appreciate it so much, man. Oh, thank you. Awesome. All right. So. <laughs>